Hi everyone, this is Peter here. In today's macro tutorial, I'm going to share with you several tips on how I do handheld focus stacking in the field. First of all, I suggest you only attempt handheld focus stacking in ideal conditions, otherwise I can assure you that frustration is going to get the best of you. This usually means that your subject needs to be cooperative or at least somewhat cooperative enough when approached and doesn't move much. Certain spiders, for example, tend to stay in one spot, which will allow you to take multiple images in succession for greater depth of field. Weather conditions need to be conducive enough for stacking in the field as well. When it's windy or even if it's just a tad breezy can make the whole process extremely difficult. If these two primary conditions are met, then my most important tip for you would be to stabilize yourself as much as possible. If you can lie on the ground, that's gonna stabilize you already and gonna help with certain subjects. But if you can't and you need to stand, make sure that you lock your elbow and you press it against your body as much as possible quite firmly. When you start taking the images, the initial shots should preferably be just before your subject starts in the foreground and try to shoot also behind the last focal plane that you want covered in your sequence. This will ensure that when you stack the images in post, your subject will have enough depth of field and it will be sharp enough all the way from front to back or to the point where you had intended it to still have sharpness. When you start taking the photos, slowly move towards your subject at small increments. This will obviously depend on the magnification ratio and other factors such as focal length of your lens or the working distance, anything that affects depth of field. Try to stay in the same angle as well while shooting as this will lead to better alignment of the images in post. Sometimes a back and forth rocking motion will also help you while you shoot these individual pictures and then you will be able to select the best images in post that you can stack properly. Just as a side note, remember that this technique only applies when shooting in manual focus. If you want to know how the inbuilt focus stacking works with the Canon R7, I've got an in-depth review and tutorial as well, so feel free to have a look at that after this video. Another small trick that can come handy with certain subjects such as insects or spiders on leaves is the stabilization of the substrate itself. For example, holding a branch or a leaf as still as possible will also mitigate the effects of a breeze. Another factor that will have an impact on the effectiveness of your handheld focus stacking in the field is how fast your flashes recycle is. At full output, which I tend to use with my particular reflector and diffuser kit, this can take some time and to minimize that, I had invested into decent quality rechargeable batteries. This has definitely made the whole experience that much smoother, but even now the flash won't fire sometimes and I have to wait longer than I'd like to. If you shoot at lower magnification ratios and for example only use a single diffusion layer, then you can significantly reduce the power output, which in return will lead to much faster recycle time and also more consistent images in terms of lighting. Using an external battery pack can also help with the reduction of recycle time, so it might be worth looking into that option as well. Many of the newer speed lights on the market come with more powerful rechargeable lithium-ion batteries and that is definitely a huge benefit. There's also another way to do handheld focus stacking in the field if there is plenty of ambient light available and you have also access to an artificial light source just to control the lighting conditions as much as possible, then you can also take a burst of shots at high frame rate while doing the exact same rocking motion. This can also help you create more consistent stacks as it saves you time and it's especially beneficial with certain subjects that tend to move quite erratically and change position quickly. So these are all the tips I've got for you for handheld focus stacking in the field. Hopefully you will be able to put them into practice and take your handheld focus stacking to the next level. Anyway, let's have a look at some images now. This very first frame is a 10 image stack of the instar of a lady beetle that I captured on the bark of a tree. This following subject is most likely the lava of a leaf beetle for this one, I only managed to stack three individual shots as it changed position quickly. I really like this next one of a really cool looking gum hopper. This first stack contains five layers and for the second one, 
I had to blend four together. This following subject is another more colorful gum tree hopper and each of these frames consists of three images. The next two shots are of beautiful orb beavers I encountered at the local nature reserve, both of them belong to the genus Salsa. For the first one I stacked seven and for the second one eight pictures. This tiny cobweb spider that you already saw in the intro was created from 15 individual shots and the second version was edited in Luminar Neo which also has an inbuilt focus stacking extension that is super fast and several AI powered sharpening tools which I used for this image with heaps of textural detail. This second last portrait is of a beautiful female bronze hopper jumping spider that I captured in our backyard. I really love the sharpness and those amazing eyes. I left a 6 image stack of a gorgeous orb weaver for last. I was super stoked with the level of detail and the exquisite sharpness. I really love the image quality of the Laub 90mm ultra macro lens, especially when paired with the Canon R7. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this simple tutorial. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will also leave affiliate links in the description in case you want to buy any of the gear or want to have a look at Luminar Neo, one of my favorite image editing softwares. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel. Thanks again and catch you all very soon in the next one.